Sourdough discard. It's a misnomer because it's really valuable stuff. I prefer using it over a regular flour when possible because it's ferment. I'll get into that more later. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to change the size of your sourdough starter so that you have enough sourdough discard to use in recipes. For example, if a recipe calls for two cups of sourdough discard and you don't have enough, I'll teach you how to get there. And I'm gonna teach you three delicious recipes. Crackers, a casserole with a sourdough crust, as well as flatbread you can use to make sandwiches and more. First, why would you want to use sourdough discard at all? Let's take white flour, for example, which has been refined. So some of the beneficial parts of the grain containing the nutrients and fiber have been removed. But what if we could ferment this flour, thus completely changing its properties? This is what happens with sourdough. Fermentation changes the gluten so that it's more easy to digest. Fermentation helps break down phytic acid, which helps us better absorb the nutrients. And it's even thought to have more antioxidants. In addition, fermentation has a way more favorable effect on your blood sugar, and it's good for the gut. Yes, the microbes will be killed during the baking process, those probiotics we hear about. However, other substances called polyphenols are produced, which feed our gut bacteria. So that's also important. So for all these reasons, using your fermented sourdough discard is really smart for your health. If I use sourdough discard in a recipe, oftentimes I just use the sourdough discard. However, if it's a recipe that calls for extra flour, I'll leave my sourdough discard mixed with the flour for 12 to 24 hours and let it ferment. Then I'm getting all the benefits I just mentioned. So let's get started with the first recipe, crackers. These have a total of only four ingredients and they're still delicious. In order to make sure I have enough sourdough discard for this recipe, let me show you what I do. I have a bunch of sourdough discard over here, but what if you didn't? Here is my starter, and there's probably only about a half a cup of it. So here's what you do to build your starter. If you need one cup of flour for a recipe, or even two cups, or even three cups, put in that amount of flour, dump in as much as you want, What's gonna happen once you mix this up with water is all of the yeast and bacteria that were in that half cup of starter, they're gonna multiply and eventually ferment this whole thing. You might have to wait a little bit longer than if you had just added a tiny bit of flour, but it will happen. I did this last night, for example, because I wanted to have a bunch of discard on hand. And honestly, I probably had a half a cup of starter and I fed it good four cups, left it out on the counter, and by this morning, it was all bubbly and fermented. So now you have a good two and a half plus cups of starter here that you can use for discard. Make sure you wait though, because this has not fermented yet. Okay, so on to the actual recipe. We're gonna start by pouring in a cup of our sourdough discard, a half teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of unsalted melted butter. Make sure this has cooled some so that it doesn't kill the bacteria in your starter. Mine has hardened a little bit too much, but we'll stir it in and make it work. And lastly, a cup of flour. I am gonna make sure this flour gets fermented though, so I'll show you that in a sec. Mix this up and then form it into a ball with your hands. Depending on the hydration of your starter, you might need a little bit more flour or a little bit more water, so feel free to tweak this. And although I used white flour today, you could definitely use a wheat flour or some other whole grain flour to make these even more healthy. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this ferment on the counter overnight for 24 hours at room temperature. It has butter in it, but it's okay. Butter's fine left out at room temperature for that long. Tomorrow, we're gonna have fermented dough to use for our crackers. I actually made this dough yesterday, so you can see how it looks when it's fermented, and now we'll just roll this out and make it into crackers. I'm rolling these out on a silicone mat. You can roll them out on parchment paper, and if anything is sticking, feel free to put parchment paper on top to help roll as well. You could go ahead and score these a little bit before baking and punch holes in them with a fork so they don't puff up, or you could do neither, and they'll still turn out fine. Now these bake for maybe 30 minutes, although this varies greatly depending on your oven, so just keep checking them. If they get brown on the edges, take those crackers out and pop the rest of the tray back in your oven until they are fully cooked. These crackers just came out of the oven. They are so crispy, buttery. They have a little bit of a hint of cheese flavor, which I love. Kind of remind me of Cheez-Its. For four ingredients, you can't beat these things, and my son loves them, so they're definitely kid-approved. 
Now for the casserole. I'll have the recipe linked below, but this is totally customizable. I'm gonna throw in some veggies, some ground beef, and top this with a nice sourdough crust. Let's start by getting the onions, carrots, and ground beef into a pan. And we're gonna add a few spices in as well. Salt, thyme, rosemary, and cumin. And we're gonna add some green peas. Now that we've gotten the filling made, we're gonna start on the crust, and this is where your sourdough discard comes in. I'm gonna start with one and a half cups of sourdough discard, two eggs, two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. This is optional, but I like to add some fresh Parmesan as well. Now we're gonna pour our topping onto our filling and bake for about 30 minutes or until the crust has nicely browned and is fully cooked. The sourdough topping mixed with the savory filling, perfect. Mm. And now for our flatbread. This is so easy to whip up, only three ingredients. We're cooking them like pancakes. They're very versatile. I like to use them for wraps and sandwiches. We just start by throwing all our ingredients into a bowl and mixing them up. Two cups of sourdough discard, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of oregano. Now you've got not one, not two, but three sourdough discard recipes. Everything's fermented, good for your gut. You're gonna love all three. And remember to eat real food. <laughs>